Tracking when a user leaves and arrives home for the day is a relatively straightforward and pretty easy thing to do. It's been covered many times on this channel. But the next step up from that and what feels like the holy grail is to be able to track people as they move around your house in the individual rooms themselves. Sure, we all have motion sensors, but those aren't very reliable if you're sitting still watching TV, for example. So how do we achieve this mythical room presence? There have been quite a few projects to tackle this, and they mostly all rely on Bluetooth tracking to pinpoint and triangulate your location. But I've always been pretty underwhelmed by the results until I heard about a new project called ES Presence, a Bluetooth tracker running on relatively cheap ESP32s that will give you room presence as you move around your house. And let me show you how it works. ES Presence is a project started by DT Terrastar on GitHub that allows you to quickly and easily install firmware onto an ESP32 that has Bluetooth that will then pick up and track a Bluetooth beacon from a device like your phone or smartwatch or something that you always have on you. The idea here is that you buy a bunch of ESP32s, place them all over your house, and then when you move around from room to room, your Bluetooth device gets picked up by ES Presence, passed into something like Home Assistant, and it works out which room you are in by which ESP has the strongest signal. Now, if you're hoping to be able to use this to be able to quickly turn on lights before you enter a room, I probably wouldn't bother. It's not as quick as that to update and you'll be much better suited with a motion sensor. But this is great for being able to tell if a room is actually occupied or not and combining that with motion sensors for turning things off after you leave a room. You will need a few things to get started with ES Presence. Firstly, you'll need some ESP32s. Exactly how many you will need is going to depend on your situation. In my case, I can get away with one per room for each room that I want to track, but if you have particularly large rooms, then you may need to add more. You can always add more rooms and expand it at any time. And I'll leave some links down in the description to some ESP32s that are suitable for this project if you want to pick some up. The other thing you will need is some sort of Bluetooth tracker. Now this could be your smartphone if you want to, but be aware that there are some limitations there. And I personally prefer the idea of something like a smartwatch or a fitness tracker for this, since these seem to work much better. For this video, I will be demonstrating using my Fitbit, which I always have on me and is never off, but there is a bunch of other potential suitable devices. ES Presence does actually seem to work well with iPhones natively from what I have tested so far, and so that could also be a good choice for you. Finally, you'll need Home Assistant installed with an MQTT broker installed and configured too, which hopefully most of you will already have. If you don't have an MQTT broker installed, then we covered exactly how to do it in this video up here, which you can check out. First thing we're going to do is install ES Presence on our first ESP32. Plug in your ESP32 to a laptop or desktop, and then head over to the ES Presence website linked in the description, and scroll down to the automatic installation section. And this uses ESP web tools to install the firmware through your browser, meaning no need to install any additional programs or compile anything yourself, which is amazing. Make sure ESP32 is selected from the dropdown and hit the install button, and then select the COM port from the list and hit connect. When you do this, depending on which ESP32 you have, as soon as you press the connect button, you may need to press and hold the boot button on your ESP32 in order to enter flash mode. Continue to press it until you see the firmware start to install and then release. Once the flash has been completed on a phone or laptop, search for Wi-Fi hotspots and connect to the ES Presence hotspot, which should now be showing up. Once connected, open your browser and navigate to 192.168.4.1, which should land you at the ES Presence configuration page, and go ahead and fill in your Wi-Fi details, hit save, and then restart the device. Once the device restarts, find your ESP32's IP address in your router and navigate back to that same web page once again. And this time you'll want to fill in your MQTT hostname, username, and password. Then enter the room name in which you will be placing this ESP32, and this will be the name that's shown inside of Home Assistant, so make sure to choose wisely. Underneath that, we have a few options that you may want to consider. Firstly, I like to disable the status LED, otherwise it will flash like crazy, and I also like to turn on the query for device characteristics, 
which should hopefully help if you are tracking Apple devices. Underneath that, you will see the maximum distance to report, and you'll probably want to configure this to the roughly the max size of the room that you plan to place it in. The rest of the options are pretty good as defaults, so go ahead and hit save and restart the device once again. Over in Home Assistant, go to Configuration, Devices and Services and have a look at the MQTT integration. If you have Auto Discovery on, then you should be good to go and all of your entities will automatically be added and you should be able to see some of them in the entities list already. If you don't have Home Assistant Auto Discovery turned on, then you will need to manually configure your sensors, which you should be familiar with, or you can turn Auto Discovery on and make things easier. Go over to DevTools and States and in the name, search for ES Presence, and you'll see a bunch of new entities added for our ES Presence device. If you see these, that means that ES Presence is able to communicate with our MQTT broker and everything is working correctly. Now, you'll notice that we have sensors in Home Assistant, but these are just for the ESP32 itself and they don't actually track individual devices, at least not yet. We need to figure out our Bluetooth MAC address of the device that we want to track. And to do that, we need to view the logs of our ESP32 to check which devices it is actually seeing. Head over to the terminal page on the ES Presence website and hit the connect button to load up the logs. You may want to reset your device first before connecting to give it a fresh start. Give it a few seconds to connect to Wi-Fi and MQTT and it should start outputting Bluetooth devices that it can see but these are just MAC addresses and likely don't mean much to you. There is a few ways you can do this, but the best way I have found is to download an app on your phone like this one called NRF Connect on Android and scan for Bluetooth devices from here too. This app can quickly find and identify Bluetooth connections and you'll see that it displays my Fitbit and even shows the Fitbit logo. From here, we can then find the MAC address and use that to cross-reference with what our ESP32 is outputting. You'll then want to copy the value that appears in the ID column and not the MAC address column. Sometimes they are the same, but not always depending on the device. Now head back to Home Assistant and into your YAML configuration and create a new sensor using the MQTT Room platform and then fill out the values like so. Make sure to paste your ID that you copied from the ESP32 logs in as the value to track, as well as give your sensor a unique name. You can also tweak the timeout values to suit your needs and then repeat these steps for each device that you want to track. Restart Home Assistant and head back to Developer Tools and search for the name of the entity that you just created. And you should see that your device is now being reported and as you move your device around, you'll see the distance changing. Nice. At this point, you can go ahead and repeat the process of installing your additional room modules by installing ES Presence onto your ESP32 nodes. Once you have multiple nodes added, Home Assistant will update the state of your sensor to the device that is reporting you as the closest. All you need to do now is place your nodes in the correct rooms. And I haven't done this yet, but there are a number of nice 3D printed cases available on Thingiverse for ESP32s, just to make things look a bit cleaner and less DIY-ish. Once things are in their final positions, you'll probably need to tweak the settings a little bit just to dial things in for your setup. So that is how to add individual room tracking to Home Assistant with the help of ES Presence. And so far I have had a pretty pleasant experience of using ES Presence, not only in terms of how super simple it is to set up, but also in terms of reliability and accuracy. I've tried quite a few of other types of these types of projects and I've never been too happy with the results I've gotten from them, but so far so good with ES Presence. And I've talked about this on Twitter before, but I would love to see ES Presence merged into the ESP Home project. I think they are perfectly suited for each other and it would be incredibly useful to use a wall switch like the Sonoff Switchman, which already has an ESP32 inside for not only controlling lights and relay smartly, but also for room tracking. And that would kill two birds with one stone. And that is something that makes complete sense in my head. In terms of next steps, you can then take this information and use them in your automations, most likely as conditions. There is a ton of ways you could actually use this information. And if you'd like a follow up video on this and what to do with it, then please do let me know in the comments if that is something you would like to see. 
Other than that, feel free to go crazy with this and see how ES Presence works for you in your smart home. In fact, let me know what is your plans for individual room tracking? What automations would you run from having something like this? I think there is a ton of cool potential and I've been waiting for something like this for quite a while. But anyways, that is about going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to support the channel, then you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.